In this series, you will learn how to model a heat exchanger from scratch. We will see what makes this model so special and how to get the exact bundle layout you are looking for. Welcome to the heat exchanger series. Let's go to the menu file, new, and we select shell and tube heat exchanger from the list. Then we click OK. Here we have the heat exchanger classification from Tima. First, we have to select the front end head. Let's select B. In the shell, we will be choosing E, the simplest one. And then for the rear end, we're going to be doing a U type heat exchanger. Then we press next. Right. Here is the main dialog for any vessel in Autobuy vessel. First, you have the design code, with all the different options that we have. Let's just ASME. We would be checking this box if we want that division two to be applied. Then this is the local load method that will be used for the openings check. And here we can select the method for calculating the bolt surface. Let's choose root area. Also, we have here the design methods. As always in this type of exercises, we'll be using the optimized design. And we click on next. We have two chambers, the shell side and the tube side and the values below that have that appear in different colors. Red goes for the required values for calculation, okay? We'll be starting with those. So here we have one megapascal. Also another option is to override it all. It's my favorite option. Always use point instead of commas. Then we have design temperature, 100. 80 and 150. Then we could see that there are some yellow values. Those values cannot be guessed by the software. They are not default values in the software, nor they are any equation from the code for which those values could be deduced. So for example, if we don't input any liquid level, means our vessel is going to be empty and if we don't input any corrosion then there will be no instead there are also green values green values are for are do not require to be filled we have uh, default values that can be provided for example here by default it's going to be water and as for the test there are equations from the code that can be used to calculate those values. Any value imposed in the software will appear in blue in the report. Let's go on. Here I'm going to remove cases okay, to accelerate calculation. Please don't hesitate to look at the YouTube video regarding loads for more information on this dialog. Here we have a loss combination that we will be handling. We are going to skip this dialog for the time being. And here is the first dialog that talks about heat exchangers exclusively. Well, uh, we are going to select internal diameter, so everything is going to be designed from the bundle layout. Uh, to outside, uh, we have the axis ratio. If there is any elliptical help, we want this ratio. For the arrangement, you can choose horizontal, vertical, and if horizontal, you can choose stacked. I mean, I'm just keeping horizontal. We will be using nominal diameters for our nozzles. You have inlet and outlet from the shell side and tube side. Well, in our case, it's simple. We are going to have six inches in all of them. 
Here you can choose the type of flange that is going to be attached to those nozzles. We are going to choose Wally neck. Then in this part, from this list, you can choose where is going to be the inlet and the outlet. Of course, you can change it afterwards and I'm going to show you how to do it. As for the body flange, here we have several types, same menu as for any other type of body flange in the software. We'll be keeping with this uh, wally neck and we'll be choosing a gasket material soft steel. To assign it, you see here we have shell and chew and we have these arrows for assigning them. The bundle dialog is going to be seen by us several times. First, we have the type, so BEU. This field is informative and free, so you can change it anytime. It doesn't mean that your heat exchanger will change. It's just this information that will be changing. Then we can choose the construction standard. That is for, for whose recommendations we are going to be following. And based on that, you can change, you can choose the class. Right. Um, from here, we can choose whether the reference line is on the channel or on the shell side. Pitch, we have several pitch. We have triangular square rotator and rotated triangle. Okay, as per Tima, uh, pitch, the pitch is regular in both directions. That cannot be changed. And if you need more information, of course, you can always check with the interrogation button or F1 by clicking on the field in question. This is the pitch value, so the distance between tube centers, the diameter of the tubes, the straight line from the tubes that goes from the face of the tube sheet to the end of the tube. And we are going to be use the WBWG scale, and here we'll be choosing the this thickness for all the chips, right? Since this is a YouTube, we have a bending radius defined. Uh, auto by vessel by default he suggests just 1.5 d, so 1.5 times diameter, which is considered in common practice to be the minimum. Okay, one them to be as close as possible, but not enough to crash. So, but in any case, you can change it here. Uh, for the baffles, we have the different types. Uh, yeah, again, you can ask software to help you. We'll be using segmento with a thickness of 10. We'll be starting left, and there will be a cut of 30%. Here you can choose spacing or the total quantity of baffles. We're going for the spacing of 300. And that will be all for the time in. We'll be arranging the baffles later. Here is where the magic happens. So we have two paths by default, that's okay. And let's choose a chip number, let's put 460, say compute. And as you see, we have our preliminary bundle layout. Okay, this is the report dialog. So everything that will appear in our report, you can change the language, you can change the unit system, output unit system, the one that appears in the report. Well, you can add some regions, you can see the job tag. So And then we'll so here you have the materials from the shell side. We'll be using everything as default. Please take a look at our YouTube video regarding materials for further information on this. For timing, just say next. And here you can see the tube side. And say, let's finish. Now we have our heat exchanger.
to see all the chips, say show all chips. We can see our pending radios, chip shed, and our partition plate. Remember to save the model. In the next part, we'll see how to define the bundle layout just the way you need it to be. See you there! Thank you.